down here. And so, oh, you got a little dust cut there. Cuts or scratches. You're basically doing that to examine your horse. Yeah. Oh, it's just like somebody sticking a big needle in their spine. Restorative forestry is where we, we go into the woods and we select the trees that are already ready to be harvested. And they fall into three categories, damaged, diseased, or dying. And we have a list of indicators that we use to assess a tree. We determine it needs to be cut. And we use a precision felling technique to get the tree safely to the ground and in a location that's easy for extraction. And we use the horses then to go in and extract that log in a way that doesn't damage the residual stand. You know, what's left is more important than what we're taking because that's the future of our woods. And as opposed to conventional stuff, uh, conventional harvesting, we can go back generally every 10 to 12 years and they're looking at 30, 40, maybe 50 year rotation. So we can go back quicker but the thing is, the value of the timber is increasing every time we go back. It won't happen the first time, the second time probably not, but about the third time you go back, you should start seeing some improvement in your woods. And so that's our goal, is to, is to in, increase the value for the landowner, but also to uh, increase the quality. And the horses are the best extraction method. That's why we use them. You know, we're not trying to go back into the past. We're not holding on to grandpa's techniques because we're old fashioned. We use the horses because they're the best method to extract the timber. There's so many different sets of skills that you've got to master before you can safely go into the woods and do this work. You gotta be able to run the chainsaw. You gotta be able to work the horses. You gotta be able to load the logs. It's, it's not worth anything if you can't get the logs out. You know. So there's, there's at least five different skill sets probably that you have to master in order to be good at it. And it takes time. It's all dangerous. It's one of the most dangerous occupations in the world. And that's why you know, we take our time at it. We go at it steady and slow because we want to be able to come back and do it tomorrow. We want, we want to survive. This is, it is dangerous work. You know, you're talking about tons of weight that's falling mm -hmm. and then you're talking about tons of weight that's moving it, you really got to con have control of it. If you don't have a, a good foot on your horse, then you don't have anything. That's that's your traction. You know? And the, the terrain we're working in is pretty rough, rocky, and so we have to keep them shod on a regular basis to give them you know, purchase on the ground. They, they have to be able to have traction. So that's something we reset the shoes every six to eight weeks. We typically don't start working a horse until they're at least five. We want to give their all their muscles, ligaments, bones time to develop and become mature. And a, a horse, you can start training them earlier. You can start getting them prepared, but to actually get them out and do this hard work, you know, this is heavy work on the horses. So we want at least wait till they're five and give them a chance to reach maturity. That way they can have a longer career at it. If you start working them early, you're going to tear something up early, generally speaking. So we wait till they're five, and then, you know, we their nutrition's a big thing. We we really try to feed them good, and we check them every day to make sure they don't have any cuts or abrasions, and they give them time off to rest. You know, horses are are renewable as well. That's what makes it so much more attractive, especially for a young person getting into this. It's a cheap way to get started because you don't have to go out and spend or borrow thousands of dollars to get started at it. You can get a team of horses, you know, seven or eight thousand dollars probably, and uh, as opposed to fifty or sixty thousand dollars for a skitter. And if you get a team of mares, you can have babies, and so you know, 
you reproduced your skitter. Berea College is currently working to establish a horse logging program within their forest. Like I said, we do restorative forestry, taking out bad timber to ensure healthy forests and good timber in the future. And that's kind of what Berea's model is. We want sustainable everything, so sustainable forestry fits right in. We want to take the bad timber out and improve our forest, you know, as well as push forward an important practice that's happening in Appalachia and, and just improving the overall health of the forest in the process. To date, there is no machine that comes close to doing the job that a horse can do. I don't see it happening in the future, but the problem is we don't have enough workers using horses to make it a viable option for the landowner. I know there are young people that would love the opportunity to do this work, but they don't realize it's even an option. And so to, to have John come and already possessing the skills it took, you know, it wasn't like I struggled to teach him. He already had a pretty firm grasp on the concept and how to do it. And it's just been a real pleasure for me to have him here and to, uh, to see there's hope for the future. And that's why we, we hope to see more of this in the future with Berea. That's just the better way of doing it. So we're trying to restore it back to the pristine nature that it could and should be.